motion sensitive so somebody doesn't drive into me. Do you recall your video on that? <laughs> An isolator or a relay or whatever. There's a dozen different things to call it. The whole idea is to separate the front batteries from the back battery. The job of the front battery is to start the motor. The front battery doesn't run the engine. The alternator runs the engine. The battery is just there to provide power to start the engine. The back batteries are there for whatever you have them doing. Okay. Um, the idea of an isolator is to keep the front battery from being discharged so you can't start the vehicle. That's what an isolator does. And there are lots of different ways. There's an ignition triggered relay and there's positive and negatives to that. They're cheap, they're simple. On the other hand, they have a large current draw and other things. Um, voltage sensitive relays, magnetic latching relays, uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on. But uh, in my application, and again, you put 10 engineers in a room, ask them the same question, you get 10 different answers, all with good reasons. So this is just my answer and my reasons. I don't claim universal applicability. Just this is what I did and why. In my van, in that van, that van, that van, that van, they all have solar. Because solar is getting so inexpensive and so easy to use that everybody's putting solar in. My van spends a lot more time sitting than it does running. Because I go somewhere, I park, I stay, and while the truck is sitting, it, the front battery is being discharged. Not a lot, but there's, in a modern vehicle anyway, uh, there's the security system is typically running, the lock system is running, the radio for the lock system, if you have a key fob, there's a radio in that vehicle that's waiting 24 hours a day for, for you to do something that it can respond to. And that means it's t drawing power from the battery. And if you let that sit long enough, your battery is going to discharge. That's quite a while. It's not going to happen in a week. Okay. Right. But, um, and we all, we all have solar panels. So we all have a charging system in the back that's constantly recharging things. And the way uh, I like voltage sensitive relays because they're automatic. And they, they delay the connection until the front battery is charged up enough. If you, as a use case scenario, whatever, thought experiment, you start your vehicle up, um, you start your vehicle up, it's drawn a bunch of power from the front battery and now you turn it off. Now you start it up again and you turn it off. You start it up again, you turn it off. If you do that enough times, it won't start anymore because you've taken current out but haven't, haven't given it time to recharge. Mm -hmm. If you have an ignition triggered relay that brings the back batteries in, as soon as you turn on the ignition switch, the back batteries are in a circuit before the alternator is running. And if the back batteries are really discharged, they're gonna be pulling current from the front battery while the starter motor is trying to get current. So having some delay between when you start the vehicle and when they connect, I think is a good idea. Well, I always just thought that it would be better to have a voltage sensitive relay so I wouldn't have to use a fuse tap for the continuous ignition source because I don't like doing that. Because it's easy. All you need is a brown line. <laughs> right. right. So I like voltage sensitive relays. But now I'm just learning another reason that they're good. Yeah, exactly. They delay. Right. They delay until the voltage in the front battery is typically 13.3, which means the battery's charged up enough that if you turned it off, it's charged up enough that it'll start again. Turn it off, it's charged up enough, it'll start again. It waits until that 13.3 level before it connects the back batteries, which means the front battery and system is happy before you start taking power for the back system. So if you're running at night, the panels aren't charging, you start the engine up, it keeps the back batteries charged. That's what isolators do. Uh, and they typically have a hysteresis in there. They'll, they'll connect at 13.3, but they won't disconnect until 13, which means if you have a little bit of voltage fluctuation going on, they're not going, you know. Right. And that's what that hysteresis is for. Well, let's suppose that so, the car battery's dead, but the coach batteries have plenty of power. Bingo. So, wouldn't it be nice to have, in addition to something that sensed the front voltage, since you have solar panels keeping the back batteries charged, wouldn't it be nice to have something that would sense the back voltage, and when the back voltage was high enough, connect the front battery so it would keep it recharged? 
That's called a bi-directional voltage sensitive relay. Bi-directional because it senses both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay? And since most of us are putting solar on our, our vehicles, the idea of a bi-directional relay, or voltage sensitive relay, is not a bad idea because if you sit for two weeks, you don't worry about it. Now, does it just click on automatically? You don't it's have still to... a voltage sensitive relay. So My power usage profile is heavy in the morning because I fix a big breakfast. Half of my calories are at breakfast and then I taper off through the day. I get up in the morning, I fix a pot of hot tea. I, uh, you know, I run, if it's cold, I get up, I turn the heater on before I get out, out of bed so that it's warm because I'm a wimp. I get up, I fix, uh, I use an electric kettle mm -hmm. to make hot water. Uh, then I fix breakfast on my induction cooktop and I make toast in my toaster oven and they're all electric. So my lowest power point of the day is just as the sun's coming up. And I don't worry about it because immediately it starts recharging. But my batteries will be 12.3, 12.4 when I finish all that. Uh, but as soon as the sun comes up, 12.5, 12.6, 12.7, 12.8, up it goes. As soon as my back batteries get to 13.3, the relay connects and it starts charging the front batteries too. Because the front battery is going to be at 12.6 because it's been sitting there right. doing nothing. So okay. is it the fluctuation that it picks up on or is it the, just 12 point level. Uh, just level. 13.3? It waits till 13.3. And that's why you have to put a ground line on a voltage sensitive relay because it needs a reference. Are we just screwing those things in with a self tapper into the frame or when scuffing up the paint or what? Or do you ever run a separate one? Ground. Well, you put you, you mount the voltage sensitive relay and you've got the battery in and the auxiliary out. Okay? Those are independent. But in order to sense the voltage, it has to have a ground reference. That's what that black lead is. Okay, and so you, you just got that needs to have a good along. ground. Okay. So you so it's got the reference to measure the voltage. And that's how a voltage sensor relay works. 13, but a bidirectional 12. one is watching the voltage in the back batteries as well as the voltage in the front batteries. And whenever the solar panels get the back batteries up to 13.3, it connects the relay and it keeps the front battery recharged too. It just seems like that's the way to go now. So when I sit here for two weeks, I don't even worry about the front battery because every day the front battery is being topped up. And since, and this is, since the front battery is an Odyssey and the back batteries are Odyssey, they have the same charge profile. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not worried about what I'm doing to the batteries. Uh, the isolator that I use is a Sterling Power Engineering Pro Connect CVSR. Current and voltage sensing, no, current limiting voltage sensing relay. Current limiting voltage sensing relay. Right. Bidirectional. Bidirectional. It senses both sides. It's low draw, um, and the current limiting means that if you do have a problem, it'll shut the current down, and then it'll come back. Uh, when when the, the short is out of the way so it actually has protection built into itself but it also so and it's a bi-directional voltage sensing relay but it also has some control lines that you can hook up to it and they're meant for I think other things I use them I have a switch on the control panel that I can force the connection to be made I can force the connection to never be made or I can allow it to operate automatically on the voltage sensor most of the time it's on voltage sensing. It's set at 13.3 and 12.6 from the factory? It's 13 and 13, 3 and 13. Oh, I thought you said 12.6 on the... No, that's that's what the front battery is when you... at night. Right, okay. So it turns on at 13.3, off at 13. So in the morning it waits until the back batteries get to 13.3, then it brings the front battery in. At night it waits until it gets down to 13 before it disconnects. So everything stays charged, everything stays happy. But the extra control lines are cool because um, I use a single switch. I, I use a single switch. It's a double pole, single throw, center off switch. You have to buy that. The center off means it's running automatic. 13.3, 13, 13.3, 13, 13, 13. But with one switch, I can force it to connect or force it to disconnect. If I take the truck in for service or if I'm doing something, all I have to do is throw a switch and the back system is isolated from the front system. It'll never come in because I've overridden the voltage sensor using that control line. If I'm going to be somewhere for a long time 
and I'm fixing breakfast for a number of people and I'm going to be using more power in the morning, I'll switch the front battery in and now I've got 535 amper hours to play with because I know I'm going to be here and I know it's going to get recharged. Right. Okay. But I can bring that extra 105 amper hours in just with the flip of a switch on and the it's control. it's the same battery anyway. Same battery anyway. It doesn't anyway. even matter. And so um, the, the isolator I use is bi-directional, voltage sensing, current limiting, manually controllable. What's the brand? Sterling Power Engineering. Okay. And the product line is Pro Connect. And they, they sell them in all different levels. I have a 140 in this because I have a 140 uh, ampli uh, uh, alternator. In his, uh, Pro, in his Pro Master, uh, he put a 210 in because he's got a 180 uh, amp alternator. So you actually have a picture of his, I think. Yeah, so there's, there's footage of his, of, of the system in there. His isn't completely connected yet. We're still working on okay. it. Okay. Uh, mine's kind of buried in the back. I don't even know whether, you, you can't actually see it without me taking other stuff out in front of it. But I have a, a CVSR 140, he has a CVSR 210. Uh, that is my choice and my reasons for choosing it. That's it. I'm, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm not saying it's the only. It's my choice and my reasons for using it. I've had it in there for... since version two, so five and a half years, give or take. Um, it always just works. I, I never even think about it. It just takes care of things. Sterling, I'll look it up. Sterling Power Engineering is an English guy. Uh, he's the engineer who designed it. Okay. I think his son is involved in the company too, but the guy is the guy who designed it. So. Um, he's got a bunch of other products on there, but the Pro Connect is the one I like for this application. Because if you're going to have solar, if you're going to have solar, once the back batteries are charged, everything else is wasted. Keep the front battery charged. Yeah, too. I agree. I agree. We're going to have a mad dash in the next three days for solar installs when all these panels show up from uh, northern Arizona, just to let you know. And we're We got room. Okay, cool. We got guys. We got people. And we have Thanksgiving at 4.30 on the 22nd. 4.30 on the 22nd. Okay. And then the 23rd is just leave no tracing. So I just wanted to give you a heads up of what's coming. Once you're up there at Thanksgiving and all we're, that jazz. We're ready. With this, okay. We're out here in the sticks. Because mm. I, couldn't, I, could, I couldn't afford an apartment, you know, <laughs> in the city. So This is a good place to be. <laughs> all right, man. Hey, give me a hug. Thank you for all you're doing. Oh, man. All I'm doing, man, you put this together. Mm, it's my pleasure. Anytime, every time. With a switch, I can force the front battery to come in. And now, instead of 430 amper hours, I've got 535 amper hours that I can draw on. Because I know, because I know I'm going to charge later. Okay? I'm not worried about starting the car in five minutes. I know it's going to sit there. I know it's going to recharge. So I can force the batteries together just to bring a little bit of extra in if I know if I'm going to be if I'm going to be using a whole lot. If I take the van in for service, uh, they don't want to have to deal with the fact that there's 430 amper hours sitting there that can weld one of their tools to the frame. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I take it in for service, I just flip that switch and it forces the connection off. And now they don't have to worry about it when they're servicing the van because there is going to be no connection between the back batteries and the front batteries. So by having a few extra control lines on it, with a single switch, you can have it run automatic, be forced off or forced on. And so I looked for something that was bi-directional, voltage sensitive, low draw, uh, and had a few extra control lines. And what I chose is the company is called Sterling Power Engineering. The product line is called a Pro Connect. And there are a couple of different kinds. I use the CVSR, which is current and voltage sensitive relay, I think. Current and voltage sensing relay. Sterling what? Sterling Power Engineering. Um, I think that's what CVSR stands for. It's pretty close anyway. If, if one of those words is wrong, I, I claim no and authority. It's... And so that, now he's got the 100, that's 180, right? 
Yeah. It's, it's like a little over 180, just uh, because like the alternator is 100. So the way I size mine, my alternator is 140 amps. Okay. So I have a CVSR 140 in my van. Yeah. So they're not cheap. But what they do is they sense both sides. So with a solar system, once your back batteries get up to 13.3, it connects and now your solar system's charging the front battery also. And it does that automatically. Yeah. And it has the control ports on it, so you with a single switch, a single uh, double throw, single pole, middle off switch. Right. Okay. Middle off means it's running automatic. One with one direction of the switch, you connect to the line that makes it force off. With the other, you connect to the line that makes it force on. And so with a single rocker switch, you can have it running automatic, voltage sensing. You can force it on or force it off. Right. So bi-directional, low draw, uh, manual selection. So what, what I chose to put in my van and what we put in Kelvin's van is that. So, um, I chose that product because of all the reasons we just talked about. Solar, automatic, manual selection, um, low draw. Uh, it's, all, it's, also, it's, so current, it's also current limiting, so if you do have a problem, um, it'll take care of that. So, uh, it's not cheap, it's also not small, depends on which one you get. He's got the 210, which is about twice as big as mine at 140. Um, that's my solution. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where um, spend the money, don't worry about it. When the solar voltage goes above, what was it, 13.3? Yeah. It automatically switches and starts charging the front battery? Yeah. That's what it does? Yeah. And it, but also the other way too. That's why it's called bi-directional. It'll sense the, the it'll oh. sense the the alternator side. So the alternator picks up the voltage that's. Been so if you're running down. at night, for example, when the panels aren't charging. Right. Okay. So you start the engine at night. When the volt when the front voltage comes to 13.3, it connects, and now the alternator is charging the back batteries. Like right. if you're driving at night. Right. But if you're sitting here for two weeks at a time and your solar panels are working, the front battery is not being charged. It is being discharged a little bit at a time because of your security system, because of the radio for the right. key fobs, etc. There's computers running and is, radios is running Is there a all possibility the of it when it's switching over starting to go like that? You know, this voltage goes up, cause this to go up, this goes ah, up, cause this. Good question. That's called hysteresis. That's why it switches in at 13.3 and out at 13. Oh, the gap. Okay. So it switches in at 13, if that voltage bobbles a little bit, it won't turn off until that gets down to 13. All right. Okay, and that's why they do that, to keep it from doing that. If you were asking, and this is again, 10 engineers, 10 different answers, this is just mine, mm -hmm. all right? If you were to ask me what would I recommend for you, I would say do your homework and make your choice. If you were asking me what I chose, I chose the Sterling Power Pro Connect. I explained the whole thing to Kelvin, he did his research, and he chose the same thing. I'm, I'm very hesitant to tell people what to do. Lithium has come a long way, and there's a lot of research and a lot of development being done in lithium batteries. So if I was starting over today, I would probably spend a little bit more time um, comparing choices five years ago, for me there was no choice because the energy density of that battery, it's an Odyssey PC1800 FT. There's 215 amper hours in 5 inches by 12 inches by 20 inches. The key is what battery you're going to use and why. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so back, Odyssey, back when I, PC, C, hang on, okay. but you should do your own investigation here. I know that. You might want to talk to the guys at Battleborn because They've been very, very good to this group of people here today. Battleborn? Battleborn. Talk to Jamie about their reference. Uh, you might want to talk to them. Uh, they're, they've got, they're sort of specialized in lithium systems. Uh, and uh, they're thinking about people like us and what, what is going to be useful for us. Now, it's still pretty expensive. So, uh, uh, but I would, if it was me, if I was starting out, I would, 
do the comparison over again because things have changed over five years technology has improved the applications have improved equipment has improved uh, so I would probably do another evaluation when I did it I chose those batteries because they were the most energy the most durable they use these a lot in in yachts and stuff like that and so they're they're vibration resistant they're very dense they're 600 bucks a battery <laughs> um, on the other hand you get 250 amp hours that are going to last for a long long time on the other hand they're AGM so you do have to be a little sensitive about how you use them if you discharge an AGM down really deep and leave it there you're buying a new battery leave it there for a, a not overnight but if you leave it there for an extended period of time the battery's gone uh, on the other hand if you have solar panels and your systems is balanced you're recharging it every, you're not discharging it all the way I put bigger battery banks in so that they don't discharge all the way they discharge a little bit and then they recharge and they discharge a little bit and they recharge and AGM batteries last a long time when you do that with them you can discharge a lithium system much deeper and not have a problem for what it's worth you don't want to have if you have some kind of lead acid technology you don't want to have a system where you're constantly discharging it all the way down right and leaving it there and then recharging it a week or two later that, that's really bad for the battery uh, so what I typically have done is I'll put a little more battery in so that you're not discharging it all the way so you're only drawing maybe 10 to 20 percent of the capacity at any given time with 400 and 30 amper hours of battery I take 800 watts I take 80 amps out and I'm a small percentage of the total battery bank so I'm not uh, discharging it a whole lot so uh, those batteries have been in there for over five years going on six years five, yeah going on six years and they've they've shown very little sign of degradation yeah it's actually <clears throat> not as expensive when they last five times longer you know I mean yeah now, like I said, if I was doing it today, I'd look at lithium technology because it's come a long way in the last five years. On the other hand, you can put an AGM, I, I don't want to, you can put an AGM system in right now, use it for four years, and in four years, lithium is going to be way better and cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So, it, but that's, a, that's something that you really ought to look at yourself. I, I hesitate to tell anybody what to do. I know choices I made at the time I made them no, for I the reasons I, I understand. Made. 140. The 140 is about half that size. Okay. Oh. Yeah, 140. Because you, you probably don't even have the 140 alternator in there. Do you have the tow package? No. No. So you've got a, probably got a smaller alternator in there. So. Um, but you could put the 140 in there. The 140 is about $130 or something like that, which is about the same price you paid for the. Uh, yeah. So that's what I chose. Yeah. Well, makes sense to me. And you know the 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 application, uh, the application typically has been the model where the, the cabin batteries get charged either by the alternator. Or by a generator. Uh. Okay. The now s solar has just gotten so pervasive and inexpensive and easy. You know, everybody's putting solar on their campers and vans and stuff uh -huh. like that. So now you've got an always-on eight to twelve hours a day charging system back here. That you're wasting if you don't use it to keep other things charged also and this probably sounds like a dumb question but is it possible for the system to run backwards for some reason like like get too much voltage in the front battery and it starts running backward current against the panels which are trying to throw energy that way in other words do they ever okay conflict? without 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 saying that i'm covering every potential occurrence or going into the math think of it like water okay if you have a water barrel here and a water barrel here and a and a pipe connecting them and you fill this water barrel up and you don't fill this water barrel up what's going to happen it's going to flow that way right. and they're going to equalize 
What happens if you pour more water into this one? It's going to flow the other way, right. and they're going to equalize. Electricity, DC, DC electricity, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's going to, it's going to go wherever the potential is. High potential is going to go to lower potential, right. and it's going to, it's going to kind of do itself. Now, we talked about this. Jamie has two systems in his bus. We talked about connecting them together, but one system is one kind of battery with one charge profile, and the other system is a different kind of battery with a different charge profile. And connecting the two of them together, you're going to have dueling controllers. One profile trying to force its way onto the other profile and that kind of stuff. So you kind of want to make sure that you're not um, ending up with dueling intelligence. But if you've only got one charger. Now what I, like I said, what I did is I changed my front battery to an Odyssey battery so that the charge profile for the engine battery is the same as the charge profile for the uh, cabin batteries. So I just swapped out the 60 amp hour battery that came with it and put a 105 amp hour Odyssey battery in the front and so the charge profiles are the same. Now that's probably not optimum because the charging profile of the alternator is not optimum for the Odyssey battery but the charge profile for the solar is. Huh. And that van sits a lot more than it drives. Right. So, hmm. but there's, a, you know, what if you don't use the optimum charge profile? It depends on hmm. how far off you are. Yeah, it'll do whatever it does. Odyssey has a great paper on their website uh, where they did the experimentation on optimum boost voltage for battery life. Now, they have the resources to do that study. None of us do, but they did it. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you look at it, they found that a boost voltage of 14.7 and a float voltage of 13.6, I'm pretty sure that's the level, is the optimum for battery life for an Odyssey battery. Uh, now, what if you charge it at 14.6 and 13.7? Well, okay, it's not optimum. I, I don't have the information to tell you what that impact is going to be, but you can read the paper and, and see. So if you have, uh, one of the reasons I, I like the Victrons is because you, you, can, uh, you can adjust the charge profiles. Hmm. I, I spent most of a night reading about the Victrons. And, so the uh, rover is telling me it gets up to like 13.7, but I don't see a yeah, 14. You're, no, no, you're, the rover is 14.4 and 13.7. I have not seen it say 14.4. I've seen it say 14.0. Is it possible there's something wrong with the system? I, you probably just have to look at it when it's still in boost. If it's reading 14.0, it's trying to get up to boost. Okay, so it's when I look at it matters. Just like people. <laughs> yeah, the only reason it would read 14 is because it's because the panels aren't putting enough into the batteries to get it up to. The, the battery voltage is going to depend on the current going in. Right. And you have to put enough current going in to get the batteries up to 14.4 or 14.7 or whatever it is. Once they Could reach it, there, you keep putting current in to keep them there. Can, and a, can a solar panel installation go bad and not be so bad that you don't really notice? Eventually, probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked about um, solar panels going towards their end of life. As solar panels go towards end of life, the, the efficiency goes down. What's, what are these batteries? Are they 12 or 6 volts? Those are 12 volts. Okay. They're 215 amp hours at 12 volts, 5 and a half inches wide, 12 inches high, 20 inches long. Why not go with 6 because of the thicker plates? Oh, you don't get thicker plates than that. Okay. That, that's what, if you, you get, on, get online and look up uh, ICPC 1800 oh, FT, okay. you'll see You'll see pictures of yachts with with 40 of those things in a line. Mm. And uh, they're, they're meant for extreme uh, applications. Obviously, you know, in a yacht, it's constantly banging things and stuff. Uh, they're, uh, I, I liked them at the time. I still like them. Um, they're a lot of energy in a small space, and that's a good thing in a van. Uh, they're very rugged. They're they're built for vibration and shock and stuff like that. Um, they're 12 volts to start with, so you don't have to put two of them in series or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, I tend to size them so that you're not drawing them way down and 
and way back up again. And I only put them in with solar so that they're constantly getting recharged. Because right. AGM, AGM doesn't like to sit deep discharge for a long time. So the only time I put in an AGM battery is when there's going to be enough solar to keep it recharged. Uh, and and when there's a when there's a, a charge controller that's got a, a boost level of at least 144, because I looked at the the chart that the Odyssey produced and that's still okay. Okay. Uh, and and the big thing is you can buy them and you'll be able to buy them because there's a lot of there's a lot of long live assets mm -hmm. that use those. Odyssey manufactures them themselves. They're put into long lived. Uh, like yachts and stuff like that. So when one goes bad in five years, ten years, you'll be able to buy a replacement. Uh, they're not. The, the technology is stabilized. They're not going to be constantly changing. If you buy a, 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 a brand new battery today and you build your system around it, and six years from now, eight years from now, you want to you want to just replace it, it may or may not be available. Right. If the technology is is churning. And so I, th I think way down the line, you know, is it good now? Is it good tomorrow? Is it going to be good, you know, eight, ten years from now when you have to replace it? And so uh, I still think it's a good choice, but they're about twice as heavy as the lithium, lithium system. But right, they're right. About, they're about one quarter as expensive.